Yeah, we've got a stock rally and we've got a Bitcoin rally. At the moment, Bitcoin is higher by 5%, but it was much higher. You see that spike on the screen there? Take a look at around 9.30 a.m. Eastern. The cryptocurrency briefly jumped 10% after the crypto news outlet Cointelegraph incorrectly reported the SEC had approved the iShares Bitcoin spot ETF. Fox Business reporters reached out to BlackRock and were the first to debunk the report. The outlet has since issued an apology. But what does BlackRock say about this and why there is so much eagerness for a spot Bitcoin ETF? Joining us now in his first interview since that Strange story and the drama <laughs> around Bitcoin this morning is BlackRock chair and CEO Larry Fink, along with Charlie Gasparino. What? When was the first you've heard about this rumor, and and what did you? Actually, see? I was busy all day. I probably heard it an hour ago, so it wasn't. Yeah, well, it was, uh, we should point out Ellie Tourette, my producer, broke the story that it was not real. But it's like wishful thinking, <clears> isn't it? <throat> isn't this what this is all about? Well, I can't talk about the specifics of anything. I think it's just an example of the pent up interest in crypto. And, I, and we are hearing from clients around the world about the need for crypto. I mean, when you think about, I think some of this rally is way beyond the rumor. I think the, the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the, you know, all the issues around the Israeli war now, um, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a fight, the quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold or crypto, depending on how you think about it. And I believe crypto will play that type of role as a flight to quality. Let me ask you this. Um, where do you think the markets go if like real hot war starts in the next couple of days? I don't know what the definition of hot war is but anymore. An invasion. <clears throat> invasion of God. It, it, if it, it, if the, my you know, my view is if the invasion is is held to the southern borders of uh, Israel, I don't I think we are anticipating that already. I don't think the market's going to be changing that much. And it really depends on the oil market and, and how that plays out. I mean, obviously, the marketplace today is up, but, you know, 350 points as we speak right now. The marketplace knows the potential reality. So I think that's somewhat into the market. And I, and I, you know, I've been asked all the time now, why is the market being so resilient with this, with now global terrorism, with what's going on in Israel, Ukraine, all the other issues? And I think we're not spending enough time talking about some of the great things that are going on in the world today. And that's when I think about technology and how that's going to be shaping and changing our world. When you think about AI and robotics, this is going to accelerate movement more towards nearshoring, onshoring, we're going to be able to use this new technology. We're going to be able to create more you productivity. You say onshore, more, more, more jobs here at, in the U.S.? More jobs and more factories. Oh, interesting. Because uh, just the opposite is the theory that's going to put people out of work. But the CHIPS well, Act, but of course, is it, it's, it's going to. Something. There's no question technology displaces some and creates new. So there, I'm not trying to suggest it's a, it's a perfect situation for everybody. But what I'm trying to talk about is the optimism. There is a strong fundamental belief that technology is going to raise the value of financial assets because it's going to increase and enhance productivity. If you look at productivity in our in our world today, productivity is falling, especially yeah, during dramatically. COVID. Yeah. And for countries that have declining populations, the declining demographic, the role of technology can play a really incredible role. You know, I know you spend a lot of time talking about the changes in, in, in pharma. And think about the, the transformation that drugs like Zempec is doing for humanity. We're going to be changing, you know, really deadly diseases into in more chronic diseases. We're going to reshape humans' lives. The work that is being done in dementia and Alzheimer's in terms of the new class right. of drugs there, we're going to be extending life there, too. So there is so much negativity going on, and a lot of it is rightfully so, but we're not spending enough time but talking about of, the optimism Larry, and one opportunities. Of, one of those negatives is inflation. It seems to be, <clears throat> and you've, you've been way ahead of this. You yeah. told me that inflation was sticky last time we were here. I it's still it. sticky. I, uh, so what does this mean for interest rates? Interest rates are going to be higher for longer. So they're going to raise that, it again, you think? Uh, the I think in rate? December the Fed will raise one more time. And I think they're going to, they have to pause in November with what's going on in Israel. Right. But I think they'll raise one more time. Think about it now. We, we have, think about it now because of the global instability. We're going to be spending a lot more money in the world for defense. Right. That's inflationary. We're going to be, spe we're spending a lot more money on reshoring and onshoring that's inflationary. All these things 
in the short run are inflationary. And so we're building up this. And we have also, the, you mentioned the CHIPS Act, we have the IRA, and we have the Infrastructure Act, all just starting to create new jobs and new opportunities. But isn't that where, when you talk about defense, for example, you, people can be trained, if you're looking through your prism, to say what's going on geopolitically, and as, as horrible as it may sound, we are a business network, the trade is what? Is it defense? I mean, we saw defense stocks pop dramatically here last Monday yes. um, in the wake of the start of what had happened yes. and what Hamas did. And clearly the United States says we have Israel's back. So d is that something where you say, look at the landscape and then go there? Exactly. I mean, we are going to spend more money in defense. You know, national security has become a bigger issue. Our borders are becoming a bigger issue. That's the same thing true in all parts of the world. And so I do believe defense, our spending towards, uh, in the short run, for more AI and more chips, this is all just accelerating. And this is one of the fundamental reasons why I believe inflation is going to be here for longer, stickier. But it's not going to be to the 1970s again, <clears throat> but it's right. going to be it's going to be elevated above the two percent target. Think they'll change the target? I, I I'm against targets, so you know <laughs> because there was a time when inflation was below the two percent right, target, right, right. and and they tolerated it. And I think there's going to be a time if we could ever get it down with firmness, uh, a three percent level of inflation for yeah. a long period of time. You know, they're going to the relax. Magic? What's the magic of 2%? Well, I don't know what's the magic of 3. I mean, to me, 3 is actually a better inflation rate. Yeah. But the problem is, if you look at what, what food costs are going up, if you look at what's going right. on related to housing, that is more than 2 or 3%. We're oh, talking yeah. 6 7 8% type of growth rates mm -hmm. in these things. And so, so many... Americans are feeling the pain of rising inflation. But from America to the rest of the world, you have been traveling yes. quite a bit. Yes. Where is the world flowing their money? Where are investments that you think are legitimate and have a longer vapor trail? Well, I would say the industries and the companies that are continuing to transform itself, some of the tech companies like you know, uh, NVIDIA, uh, some of the pharma companies like Eli Lilly, uh, some of the defense companies. But that's U.S. That's U.S. Now, in the world, uh, we just were with uh, uh, $23 trillion of global investors in Japan uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity in Japan is, is breathtaking because you're starting to see the Japanese economy move out of its 25-year tailspin. It's about time. <laughs> and, it, and the stocks are really cheap. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they're undervalued, and all the investors came away saying, we got to refocus on, in, on, on Japan. But then you got India, you got Mexico. Think about where all the reshoring of, you know, as, as companies are looking to diversify away from China, you're seeing the companies are moving to Vietnam, they're moving to India, they're moving to the Philippines, they're moving to Mexico. Mexico has had phenomenal GDP growth over the last year and a half. And that's a lot of these companies are moving there for nearshoring. Let me ask you about the Middle East, because I, you, I, you've tweeted, you've made statements uh -huh. in, uh, you know, in support of Israel yep. very forcefully. I've noticed that some of your, your brethren in the CEO community have not. You know, I, I literally remember Jamie Dimon taking a knee with Black Lives Matter. What, what is going on here? I mean, why, I don't focus on other people. I got to focus on what right. we're doing. And, oh, I, I, you, know, I, 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 you know, we've had outrage. We're horrified by the images. Right. We, we, the world needs to get back its moral compass. I did a town hall to all the BlackRock employees today, and I asked every one of the BlackRock citizens to focus on how can you improve humanity? How can we bring down the heat of hatred and fear? And the problem is hatred and fear is growing. And, you know, BlackRock as the largest retirement manager in the world, we have to focus on hope. Yeah. Because why would anybody take their money out of a money market fund that's earning 5.5% to invest in the long run? It is about hoping and believing that the future is better. I like money market returns right now. Right? I do too. But I, I, you know, there are a lot of things I like right now. But, but, but Are they afraid you're, you're, you're some of these CEOs from standing up for Israel? It seems like such an obvious thing to do. I'm standing up against bigotry and hatred. I'm standing about against all means of bigotry and hatred. Well, always, always, Larry, always. But right now, this is not any have, different. But I spoke Bill out Ackman, loudly. You've yes. got Bill Ackman yes. of Pershing Square, yes. Mark Rowan of Apollo Global, yep. saying, "What is going on at our alma maters of Harvard and UPenn?" And now John Huntsman, 
John Huntsman, the yes. former governor of Utah, former ambassador to Russia, China, Singapore. They're done. These are all billionaires, yes. some Jewish, some not. Uh, and look, you're, you're an alum of UCLA. Yes. Uh, last week, there was a professor at UCLA who gave extra credit to students who would attend a pro-Palestinian rally. And look, we're, we're all for free speech, et cetera, but there is not a moral equivalent or any kind of symmetry between, hey, you know, what's going on in the Middle East versus what happened to Israel on October 7th. Totally agree with that. I mean, um, will you not give UCLA money anymore until they get this together? Um, I'm not sure specifically. I'm, as a board member at NYU, we were loud and specific and immediate in terms of stopping any of that support of hatred. Um, and at BlackRock, we have a long history of making sure when we recruit young people, and last year we recruited 575 incredible, you know, uh, young men and women uh, to join the firm. And we always, you know, do a pretty deep, broad background check. We would never hire anybody. This is not just because of this event. We, we, you know, we try to making sure that we are hiring people who, who believe in civility, who believe in humanity, and are not, you know, voicing opinions of hatred and terrorism. Okay. And so this is not any change for us. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, much more with Larry Fink and Charlie Gasparino. But in the meantime, we should take a look at the markets. The Dow is still holding on to gains of 320 points. And, of course, we've got a big rally here. What does Larry think about the money market funds and the flows going in there and away from some of, yeah, iShares ETFs? Much more on that coming back with Larry Fink. 